One of the glories of the season of Advent, like the season of Lent, is the fact that the readings are tailored to match each other so beautifully, rather than being continuous passages from two different parts of the Bible, as we normally do during ordinary time. And I think today's readings are so beautifully matched, so beautifully paired, um, like a great wine and a great perfect cheese, you know? They, they fit together and they illuminate each other so beautifully. So the, 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 the uh, passage about the Good Shepherd in Matthew that we're so very familiar with that we, we might miss the fact that our Lord says, what is your opinion of this? So he's inviting us to think about it. And he depicts a picture of what we call the Good Shepherd, but if you read it, it's really the, the extravagant shepherd, the, the reckless shepherd, even perhaps in terms of worldly wisdom, a foolish shepherd who leaves 99 to find one that's probably, possibly, likely even to be totally lost by that time. It doesn't make sense. But the Lord's point is not to give us advice about good shepherding, but rather to give us an illustration of the extremity of God's love for us. And that is exactly what Isaiah speaks about in that 40th chapter, which is a kind of a turning point, you might say, for the whole Old Testament, because it announces the fact in words that have, again, become very familiar to us from Handel's Messiah, to, that we should be comforted by the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Well, whenever God in the Old Testament talks about a wilderness, he's really talking about the exodus from Egypt into a promised land. And what Isaiah is prophesying is the new exodus to a new promised land into a new creation, one in which God's love will remove all sin. Perhaps you've been involved in situations in life where you, you, know, you were involved in doing something or you walked into a situation that was being worked on and you just said, this is a mess. Let's throw the whole thing out and start over. You know, like, you know, making a meal or building a house or something like that. You just want to start over and do the whole thing from scratch. It's, it's a lost cause. Our Lord is going to make a new creation out of this sin-damaged world. And that's what Isaiah 40 announces when it speaks about a path straight in, in the desert, a highway for our God to come and save us. And when he gets to us, it says he will take us in his arms and, and shepherd us like a caring, nurturing, loving shepherd would do. That's the image that Christ is calling upon. He's telling us that he is that new, loving, extravagantly, recklessly loving shepherd who is going to bring us into this new creation. How? By his own death and resurrection. Let us embrace that the way St. Nicholas did in his work, his unselfish work as a shepherd, a bishop of God's people in the ancient church, whom we revere and remember today in the transformation that we call Santa Claus. But let us hold on to that fact that God working through his shepherds, God working through his disciples is bringing that reckless extravagant love to his people through the grace of Christ's cross and resurrection.